Howdy, Alpern here, and on today's menu we have the USF Meta Build Order, so let's jump straight into it. Now, this build order analysis is mainly focused around 1v1, as in team games there are way too many variables to really discuss anything in a comprehensible manner. Today we're taking a look at the US forces, but we will cover the other factions at a later time, so make sure you subscribe to not miss out. In 1v1s for USF, the clear majority of the games are started off by three riflemen. This in general is quite strong, as riflemen can deal with German infantry in most scenarios. You rarely if ever see the fourth rifleman queued, since it would delay tech for quite some time, and since teching also gives you infantry as USF, you risk bleeding if doing so. The third rifleman here is also quite interchangeable by some early doctrine options, such as a pathfinder or a cavalry rifleman. There are of course other options, such as assault engineers and the WC-51, though these are way more uncommon. As for teching, the vast majority of the games choose lieutenant over captain. Lieutenant gives you access to the 50 cal HMG, as well as the M20 and the Stewart. The 50 cal helps USF a great deal with snowballing, which is usually going to be your main win condition. Both the M20 and the Stewart are amazing light vehicles, and it's not uncommon at all to spot both at the same time. The Captain provides you access to the M180 gun and the AA half track, which in comparison is a way weaker power spike. The Stewart deals really well with all of the la Axis light vehicles, and you can even beat the Puma by using the blind shot. Hence, it's better than the 80 gun as it also adds infantry pressure. The AA half track is also quite inferior here as its main gun can only shoot while stationary and has really long reload cycles, making it difficult to finish off vehicles. Not to mention how awkward it can sometimes be to actually maneuver. Therefore, the most common approach is going for a lieutenant. After the lieutenant, it's most common to grab a 50 call than to tech and get the steward. If you rather want the M21, there is an alternative route of teching here that leaves you with a faster M20 timing. This would be grabbing only two rifles at the start of the game, floating manpower until you have 35 fuel to queue the lieutenant before the third rifle. This is better as lieutenant takes a really long time before it fields and if you instantly tech after queuing the lieutenant you can see some really fast M20 timings. This can then be followed up by a 50 cal and a steward for some really strong early pressure. Be aware, grabbing M20 and steward is a lot of fuel invested into early vehicles, and if they don't help your map control, you will struggle with the medium timing compared to your opponent. Therefore, I would mostly advise going M20 and steward versus OKW, as OKW's light vehicles and teching is generally more expensive, leaving your mid game timing quite okay, even though you get the stronger early game. After the steward is built, there is generally going to be an ambulance and a second 50 cal. Not too uncommon if you have airborne equipped is to drop paratroopers around this time, which is then usually followed up by an AT gun, using the AT gun drop. If you're doing well, going straight for major afterwards is very common. This will let you have a strong timing for any of the vehicles you're going for. I would say vanilla meta is go straight for the Sherman, though very common in the meta is the EC8 or 76mm Sherman, both of which are strong vehicles that can battle the opponent's panzer force. If you're struggling for fuel, however, it's usually more common to go for weapon racks before major. Going weapon rack before major allows you to keep any early medium vehicles away while still transitioning to the mid game. This is favorable compared to back teching to captain and an 80 gun, as that would be extremely heavy in terms of manpower. Getting weapon racks early isn't necessarily bad either, as while well it does delay your Sherman a bit, it also provides access to bars, helping your rifleman to trade better in engagements. Back taken to captain is extremely rare and is considered somewhat of a manpower sink. If you're really struggling, it is of course always an option to do back tech for the 80 tanker. Otherwise, USF has naturally strong anti-tank, since Sux is always going to be fielded and the Jackson is a great option versus heavier vehicles. The late game composition you end up with playing as the USF is most likely one of the most diverse out of all the factions. This is because you don't always 
sea and tank guns in the composition, as captain generally isn't a part of the build order. Most builds, however, end up consisting of at least one rear echelon, three riflemen, two 50 cals, a steward, lieutenant, and a major. The rear echelon, lieutenant, and major generally transitions into being soft anti tank units as you equip them with souks during the match. As for tier 4 vehicles, all of them seize play and support each other quite well. Scots can harass from a distance and works great versus the support weapon heavy Ostir meta. During opponents counter dives to the Scots, the Jacksons can kite all of the German armor while Sooks provide that extra damage to stop the really deep dives. Not to mention, a lot of the commander vehicle call-ins sees play across the board, giving you access to vehicles such as the EC876 mm Sherman Pershing as well as the Doser upgrade for the normal Sherman. During the late game, US ends up being one of the strongest factions because the faction can't really peak. Instead, it's possible to go beyond 100 pop cap using the USF vehicle crew abilities to get an edge over your opponent. This means you sometimes can really just swarm them, combining smokes to stop the 80 gun walls and encircling their vehicles. The priority for your munitions is very different depending on the game, and you don't really have a general sense of priority. I would say sweeper is always the most important to at least have once you hit your early vehicle timing, and as soon as an opponent's light vehicle is spotted, I would say it's always favorable to get the souk upgrade on the lieutenant. The souk upgrade on the lieutenant does not require weapon racks and gives you a decent soft anti-tank while the squad remains a threat for infantry. Using abilities to gain direct advantages such as mines, blind shots from the steward, cover to cover or grenades is mostly going to win you more games than if you prioritize floating the munitions for bars though of course these abilities do require an opportunity. I would say once weapon racks is teched, that getting souks before getting bars is usually the safest option, as it's easy to miscalculate your opponent's timings. However, if you feel safe, getting bars always at least has an impact compared to getting souks versus no target. Meanwhile, of course, the grenades are teched very differently depending on the game itself. Sometimes I find myself teching grenades when facing a lot of machine guns, since, you know, it's a way cheaper way of dislodging them compared to getting, say, a mortar. This is especially true on maps such as Feynmanville Approach, where a machine gun in the center building can make me take grenades such as early as immediately after getting the lieutenant. As with any faction, I would always recommend to be floating at least 50 to 60 munitions at all times to make sure that you can punish reckless vehicle behavior with snares or to get sneaky mines down. Now I plan to make a lot of these sorts of guides in the future, and especially for Cove 3. So if you do plan to pre-order Cove 3, please do use the link down below in the description and use code Alpern on checkout. This helps me directly by giving me a cut of the purchase. Now thank you and thanks for watching. I'll be making moves till I'm buried in my grave. Through the system, I don't wanna be a slave. I've been doing shit my way or the highway.